Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be diving into raptor lining, prepping, and painting this trailer. So one thing I really do want to touch on is setting up something like this. It is a lot more work to raise it up and do stuff like that rather than I could just keep it low to the ground. Pretty simple, a lot less work. The amount of paint that you're going to get underneath this thing compared to like when you raise it. If you're only a foot away from this thing, there's no way that you can get underneath there half decent compared to if it's farther away. You can get underneath there half decent. See what you're doing. You're going to get a much better job, and then your customer is going to be a lot happier, and then they're going to come back to you.
So we got this thing all box lined. Now we're gonna unmask it. We're gonna scotch up the box liner, rough it up a bit so it's ready for a primer. And yeah, then we're gonna paint this whole trailer today. Liner. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna wrap it up. I'd rather take the extra time, make sure that it adheres to the box liner. That way the top coat isn't peeling off. What I'm using is a wire brush. You can use a scotch brite also. Either or will work. So I'll give you guys a quick look. We just finished everything that can get hit from the front. We're kind of doing from the rocks. So now we gotta paint all this and then part of the fenders. We did a trailer for these guys about five years ago and they said that that trailer still looks good as new. Since this box liner is freshly sprayed yesterday, you don't have to go crazy hard because most people don't even scotch bright it or wire brush it to make it adhere to it. If the box liner is like a month old or two months old and you want to paint over top of it, you're going to have to scotch bright or wire brush that thing pretty hard just because the coating is that much harder so the primer has a harder time to adhere to it. So you want to make sure that it's prepped very well. Other than that, it'll be peeling off. <laughs>
So I've had quite a few questions in the past of like what gun that we always use when we're spraying. So we always use an airless, a Graco. We have a 1595 and a 1095. Honestly, I wouldn't use anything but an airless on a, a big job like this. It's just, it would take you so long if you used like a pressure pot or an HVLP. It'd probably take you like, I can't even imagine how long. It takes long enough with an airless, let alone having to get out every time you need to fill up with paint. Also another interesting fact, when you do use an airless, you put on probably twice as much paint as you do with an HVLP. So you get a way better finish of the job because it actually has to fill the blast profile compared to the HVLP. It will never fill it. HVLP, even, even if you put two coats of primer, it will still just look dirty like there's sand in it or something. It's just because it literally can't fill the blast profile. And one more thing, if you are spraying a thicker epoxy primer, most HVLPs or something like that, they won't even spray it. It'll just be it'll just be so globby that it just won't even look half decent either. Compared to an airless, you can crank up the pressure. It can take a little higher volume solids compared to an HVLP. Comment down below. I'd like to hear from you guys. Do you want to see some heavy equipment, trucks, or do you want an educational video? There's definitely lots of different options. I kind of have both, or I can always do an educational for sure. There's definitely always lots to learn. As always, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.